Matchroom Radio, episode 78. We're in Las Vegas, Nevada. We have a big fight this weekend. We're at the Fountain Blue. It's the inaugural fight here at this casino. It's a beautiful property. And today we have an incredible guest with us. We have the newly minted WBA featherweight champion of the world, the savage Raymond Ford, my brother. What's up? What's up? Man? It's great to see you, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's such a pleasure to see you. You look great, man. How you feeling? I feel great. I feel like a champ. You are a champ. <laughs> you are a champ. It's crazy. I mean, it's been... It's been years now that we've been together. I've been watching your journey. Yeah. Um, and it's just, you know, such an exciting fight also, not just to win the championship, but in that manner, yeah. dramatic fashion. A lot of people calling it the fight of the year. Um, it's definitely a contender for fight of the year. Yeah. How does that feel? It feels great. I didn't, I never expected to be in a fight of the year type of fight. Um, I expected to dominate every last one of my fights, but, um, yeah, it felt great to, you know, finally, you know, start to get the recognition that I feel like I've been working so hard for. Well, for sure. And what's crazy is like, so again, we I've been announcing your fights for years. So I've, I've, I've seen the, the transit and you've always been talented. Yeah. Okay. But there was a couple fights where it was just kind of, you kind of seemed to just level off. It wasn't, it was less than impressive. You always win, but it was less than impressive. Yeah. But then something happened, man. And it just switched and you just changed gears. Yeah. And you haven't looked back. What happened, man? Uh, you know, I was just finding myself, uh, you know, early on in, in my career. And um, I feel like I finally found myself. I found what I needed to do to, you know, be at the best of uh, me. And um, I feel like now I'm just only going to get better and it's not, it ain't no stopping me. I mean, you train with a lot of top guys. And... Um, you're in Cherry Hill, right? You train in Cherry Hill? Yeah, that's my gym in Cherry Hill. With Reggie. Yeah. And who else are you training with? Uh, Coach Anthony Rodriguez. And then when I go to Houston, I'm there with Teray Stevenson. Teray also. Yeah. And, um, but you also, you spent time training with Shakur, right? Yeah, yeah. How did that help, another Jersey guy? Yeah. How did that help you, or has it helped you um, kind of kind of grow, seeing what he's done? He's obviously very accomplished. He's very, very talented fighter yeah, most definitely uh you know, like you said he's you know at the top level very accomplished um you can only learn and get better from being around people like that um so you know being around him it elevates my game it me allows me to you know perform at different levels and uh you know it's not even you know more so about me sparring him all the time because we i've been sparring Shakur since i was an amateur so uh it's more like just the advice that he would be giving me and um I just take it and I use it for myself. Can you elaborate on that? What kind of advice would, would, would Shakur give you? Uh, you know, basically, he just, you know, tell me to stay being myself. Um, sometimes he, you know, tell me, sometimes I got to box more or sometimes he tell me I need to, you know, step in in the pocket more. And uh, uh, he give me, like, tips on, like, how to make weight and um, what I need to eat, you know, leading up to my fights sure. and things like that. So it, it's a lot of things outside of the ring. Uh, more so than what it is inside the ring. I love what you just said. It's really great because, again, like, you know, boxing, it's there's so many different levels to the sport. Yeah. And even when you turn pro, like, most guys are, as far as fight, they're really good. Yeah. But then you get to four rounders, to six rounders, to eight rounders, to ten rounders, then to now to 12 round world champions is another level. Yeah. To me, one of the things that really makes the big difference is being able to make adjustments. And to me, that's what you did in the Kolmatov fight. Yeah. You were able to make an adjustment. Like you weren't going in there looking for a knockout, mm -hmm. but you saw something and you made it, and you, like you said, you stayed in the pocket. Yeah. And I saw it and you used your, your strength yeah. and you were able to stop him. You were down on two out of three cards. Yeah, it was. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> did you know that? Did you have a feeling? What, what did you think? Did you think I need a knockout or? Uh, no, I didn't know I was down on the cards. I just knew it was a, a close fight and that we was fighting on under his platform and his promotion. So um, you I could make take, an assumption. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to, you know, take that into consideration, you know, going into the final championship rounds. And uh, basically, I didn't I didn't know I needed a knockout. But, you know, it, I pushed myself to get the knockout. So, yeah. But the so Komatov went down before the knockdown. Yeah. And Charlie Fitch didn't call it a knockdown. Do you think that helped you in a way? It did. I think it did. Uh, it gave me extra time to, you know, do what I had to do. Well, yeah. it gave him less time. He didn't have the time to recover. Exactly. So I think they was kind of like trying to 
you know, help him out in a way, but it backfired on him. It backfired. Yeah. And now you hold the title. Definitely. Eight knockouts, and that last one was spectacular, brother. <laughs> That's spectacular, you. man. Wow. Yo, your mom, how's your, your mom must be over the moon. Nah, yeah, she was going crazy. She was crying. Oh. Everybody was crying, but I feel like. <laughs> you about to make me cry, man. I'm so happy for you, bro. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, my mom, you know, like I said, she been through it all with me. Uh, she seen me, you know, from a kid, obviously, because she's my mother, but, you know, she seen me, like, grow from. Being an immature kid, fighting a lot, getting suspended and expelled from schools and, you know, going to juvenile detention centers, things like that. She seen me, you know, come from that to becoming to what I am now. So uh, she's just extremely proud of me. She must be so proud. She loves you so much, yeah, bro. Yeah. I mean, obviously your mom's, but yeah. we spent time together. What was it, Nottingham? Yeah, yeah. Years ago. That was my first time in the UK. It was, I remember it. first time out of the country. And I took you out. We went out for, like, yeah. food and stuff. Yeah, and we ate some crazy stuff, and you yeah. were like, "What the hell is this?" But yeah. but you enjoyed it, right? Yeah, it was it was it was a great experience. Uh, I look, I got that uh, that story on my on my highlights on my page. So do you really? Was, yeah, I do. So, I had a great time with you, and and yeah. that was so great. And your mom too, like yeah. spending time with her, she was lovely. And I'm really, I'm just so proud of you, and and happy for her too, because I know she's over the moon. Yeah. So let's talk about that just for. A second, because you, you're talking about how you used to fight when you was a kid. Yeah. You went to juvie. Um, a lot of people don't know that that background of you, and that's how you actually got got introduced to the gym. Can you talk about that a little bit? What was going on back then? Uh, I can't even like really remember what was going on or why I was you know fighting so much and had so much anger. I, it was just something that it was like an everyday thing for me. I get suspended from school. I do like a ten day suspension. Cause like at a certain amount of time, like you probably get like a three day suspension, and then like when you keep getting suspended, it did start upping it. Hmm. So like it was to the point where it was like ten day suspensions, and I'll come back to school, fight the same day that I got back, and get suspended again. So then it was like we gotta start expelling this kid. So they expelled me, and then I went to like you know um, alternative schools and things like that, and that was going on from like a very young kid. I want to say like probably the first grade on up. And then um, I got a little better once I got into boxing. And then um, once I got my first year in high school, that's when I started to get into like serious trouble. Cause now you're at a different age, you can of course. get in trouble and it's gonna be worse uh, results and things like that. So, um, but once I, you know, went through that whole little stage of me going to juvie, I came home, I got back into boxing, started locking in and uh, basically just changed everything how you know how i did things so you were getting into fights in the street you're getting into trouble getting in trouble in school so your mom takes you to the gym yeah what was it like when you first went in there did, was it like a fish to water did you like it at first did you not like it because boxing you know is a lot of miss people there's a lot of it's a very misunderstood sport in a lot of ways especially yeah. to people on the outside they think it's just renegade and people in there fighting but it's, it's really about respect and discipline yeah. and there's a lot of that so was that hard? Did you tell me about it? So the the, the way I got introduced into boxing, it actually wasn't from my mother. It was from a, a kid on my block who used to live on my block. His name was Adrian. Um, he was a little older than me. I want to say he was about 14, 15 when I was nine. And uh, he, he was a boxer. So um, one day he seen me fighting on the street and uh, basically he just took me under his wing. He had a punching bag in his basement. And okay. He used to bring me to his house. Uh, I would hit his punching bag. He would hold the mitts for me. He showed me how to get into my, my proper stance, and I would go on runs with him and things like that. Like, actually, his whole family know who I am still to this day. They be reaching out to me and things like that. Um, yeah, so that's how I got started into boxing. And then um, I was asking my mom to actually take me to a gym so I could, you know, start competing and things like that. So you wanted it? Yeah. So. Oh, cool. Uh, so she didn't. She never wanted me to box at first. It took like. A, for her, it took like a year or a year and a half or something like that for her to take me to an actual gym. And uh, once I got into the gym, it was just like, I remember it was like one of the hardest workouts I ever did. Like he had me just punching with the same hand nonstop. My arm was getting tired. Um, but the good thing about it was I already knew my stance. Cause like I said, I was, you know, working out with the kid. So uh, basically like the, the fundamental things and stuff, I already had that down. So it was kind of easy. I think I had like, it took me it took me six months to have my first amateur fight. So um, yeah, but it was a it was a great experience. Uh, I think it that was the best decision my mom could 
could have made for me at that time. And uh, it, you see the end result. You see the end result. How old were you when you had that first fight? Do you remember? I want to say 11. 11. Yeah. And it took six months before you even were able yeah, to get into I, the ring, before you had that fight. Yeah. And were you a good amateur? Yeah, I was. Were you good uh, off the bat or it took a little time? I want to say it took a little time, but if you look at it, it really didn't take that much time. I think I started to, like, I was fighting. I fought somebody with, like, 50-something fights in my third fight. So I've been fighting experienced guys from the very start. So, um, But I don't feel like it was. It, it started off good. I didn't think I started to get good until I was about 13. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that's one thing about you also a lot of people don't know, like, you a dog, bro. Yeah. You a dog. You'll fight anybody, fight anywhere. Anybody. You will. That's who you are. Yeah. I know that. A lot of people, you know, I don't know how much. This, hopefully people get to know you yeah. through things like this. Now you're world champ and, and you're on a podcast and you're doing bigger things. Um, but, you know, coming up in Camden, um, people, a lot of people from the UK, you know, big audience from there, but they might not know about Camden. Yeah. Um, it's a rough town. Yeah. It's a real rough town. Um, it's right, right outside of Philly. Um, can you tell us what it was like growing up there and, and tell us about Camden a bit? Camden is uh, the poorest city in America from the last time I seen. But um, it was just like every day is like a, a new experience out there. It's just you want to see something crazy going on. Um, you see um, crackheads and stuff like that on a regular everyday basis. You see... Um, fights you see you hear shootings like i'm you sleeping at night you hear gunshots like things like that it seemed regular growing up in canada but once i started to like travel the world and things like that for boxing and i'm like nah that wasn't regular like it wasn't that's not the norm you feel me so it's I like do. uh camden it, it was it, it's a city that made me so I'm, I'm proud to be from there because i probably wouldn't be i wouldn't be who i am today if i never was raised there so um yeah, that's that's all I can really say about it, for real, for real. Yeah, it's a tough place, man. Yeah. It's a great place. It, it is. There's some good food there, too. Yeah, it <laughs> and is, some it good is. food. Again. You're is. a foodie. I am. You're a foodie. I post a lot of my food from there, too. Yeah, yeah. What do you like to eat? What do you like to eat? I, right now, my favorite spot in Camden is uh, Nori's, Nori's Lunchbox. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's my favorite spot to go. Um, she got, like, this uh, seafood type of thing over over rice and it's like this sauce on it that's like so good i think it's called like sweet chili sauce and then it's like a garlic heat. like i get like two sauces on it so that's like one of my favorite places to go and like every time i post it everybody always asks me where where i get it from that's the spot shout out to nori's but yo so speaking of food and speaking of 126 you, you want to stay at 126 you want to move to 130 what what because there's been there's been talk yeah. you know um do you find it are you still able to make the 126 if I get a nutritionist, I could possibly, you know, make one twenty six again. Okay. But um, I don't know. We just gotta wait and see. Um, I mean, there's so many good fights out there is, for you, bro. It is. It's one twenty six I mean, is a stacked division, and uh, so division, many fighters. Yeah, it is, and it's 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 a division that I that I looked at and you know want to stay at because there's so many names there, and it's not that many big. It's not big names there. So I feel like if we all stayed and fought each other, it could be like that division, like how the 135 was. So, Cordina, yeah. Warrington. No, no, no. They at 130 now. Uh, no, I know, but around that, that. Oh yeah. yeah right but, but like in that, in that vicinity. I mean, just UK fighters: Lee Wood, Warrington, yeah. and Cordina. Just there. That's just UK. Yeah. But Ray Vargas, obviously yeah. Nick Ball. Mm-hmm. But did you watch that fight? Did yeah, you? Yeah. What did you think of that fight? Who you thought won that fight? I was kind of like uh, in and out of the fight, um, because. I think I was probably doing something on my phone and things like that, but I didn't really watch it to judge it. But from what I seen, it was a, it was a good fight. I think um, Vargas controlled the first half of the fight, and then Nick Ball started to pick up later on in the fight, and uh, he had bigger rounds and bigger moments. So uh, it, it was a great fight. It was a great fight. What do you think? I mean, Ball is just man. He yeah. comes right. He like a uh, featherweight Mike Tyson. Yo, he don't stop. Yeah, he don't yeah. stop, man. That was uh, a it was a really it was an exciting fight. Yeah, I like his attitude. I like his his mentality. Yeah. yeah. So also Lopez, Luis Alberto yeah. Lopez. Yeah. He's another potential opponent. Yeah, I actually uh, me and him sat down in the sauna together uh, for my last fight when we was, getting, we was making weight together, and uh, he was. 
I had a translator. He was asking me questions. We was, you know, going back and forth with the translator and things like that. He cool dude, uh, but I, I let him make that fight happen too. It, it, that's another big. He's fight. a slick fighter. He is in his own way. But yeah. but you you think you can? Yeah, of course. See, this is what I love. <laughs> <laughs> Raised. I, I think I can you want to talk to smoke? Yeah, for, for sure. I, I don't I don't mind fighting. That's what I've been growing up doing. So yeah. And in the streets, I've been fighting guys bigger. So like me fighting people my size is not really. A problem for me. So, like another thing, I think a lot of people don't know about you is that um, you are a student of the game. Yeah. Um, you like to watch a lot of old fights. I do. Who are some of your the fighters that you love to watch and that you might want to emulate? Or I like Mark Two Sharp Johnson. That's, DC. Yeah, he's one of my. Favorites. I love Mark Two Sharp Johnson. He's very, very, very sharp. Oh um, yeah. He just don't get that credit because, you know, he was in a smaller weight class. He was in a lighter weight class, yeah. and it was a while ago. It didn't, that those lighter weights haven't they weren't did. as popular back then. Yeah. But he, Mark Tushar Johnson was great. Yeah, he was Washington, D.C., man. That's, I feel like he slept on. That's my guy. Great fighter. He's probably, like, one of my favorite southpaws. I like him over Pernell Whitaker. I like Pernell wow. Whitaker, too, though. Okay, that's saying a lot. Yeah. yeah. Sweet yeah. P is. Yeah, he's the guy for the southpaws. Legend. Yeah, so um, I like uh, Pernell, though. I like Will Jones, Sugar Ray Leonard. I like to watch Ali. Um, it's a few other guys I, that I like to watch. You also love Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, he's my favorite. I mean, but you said a little older. I feel like Floyd sure. is kind of he's, like he's more era. current era. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Um, what are some of your favorite Floyd fights? Antonio Gotti, uh, Dio Corrales. Um, right now I'm watching him versus Jesus Chavez, I think his name is. Hmm. Um, the Gaddy fight, man, that was a tough one to watch. Yeah. That was a tough one to watch. Yeah. I love both guys. Yeah. I was friends with Arturo. Yeah. And Arturo got the heart of a champ and all that, but mm -hmm. he didn't have skills on that same level. Yeah, he couldn't be that, that And time. it, it, it just, time. it wasn't, and he just got, oh, it was tough to watch, yeah. man. I it didn't, I didn't enjoy that fight. <laughs> <laughs> they, they build that as thunder and lightning. Yeah. I remember that thunder and lightning. Because uh, his nickname. Yeah, it, it was a good build up, but. I, don't know, I, I just felt like Floyd was firing on all cylinders. Of that course. Fight. He was just, he was feeling it. And you get nights like that where you just feeling it and everything is just clicking. And that was just the night for him. And, uh, yeah. So just again, I just want to go back to the Coleman Tall fight just for another second. Like, you know, because again, to me, the, there's a lot of really good fighters out there. Yeah. But to be a great fighter and those guys that you all just mentioned, they, they make adjustments. You got to be able to make adjustments. Yeah. And, um, you're with a, a, a great manager now, Brian Peters. Yes. And he has a lot of other great fighters, Katie Taylor, one of them. And one of the things I love about Katie so much is she makes adjustments. Yeah. And seeing you do that, it just, um, yeah, it, it just raises the level on yeah. it. Um, adjusting is a part, of the, a part of the sport. If you can't adjust at this top level, you're going, you know, far behind. So, um, like I said, I watch a lot of boxing. Um, I watched the Greeks. Floyd Mayweather, he's probably one of the best adjusters in the, in the sport of boxing in history. Um, I watched Terrence Crawford. He's another great adjuster. 100%. Yeah, so um, I watched I watch a lot of boxing. I study the game, so that's where I, it comes from. But So let's say you're in a fight. You you Do you come in with different game plans? Like, do you come in with, okay, obviously, we're going to try it this way. If you can't get in the front door... We're going to go through the, the side door or the back door. Like, do you have, or or is it just kind of on the fly? You're in there and you, does, does your corner help you? How does that, how does that happen? Does, do you know yourself when you're in there doing like, hey, man, like you said with Comatop, you were missing, he was making you miss a lot. Yeah. So that's when you were like, you know, let me stay in the pocket yeah. and let me, let me exchange this guy. And then you realize like, I can hurt him. Yeah. Um, it depends on the situation. Um, it depends on the fighter. It depends on me at the moment sometimes i might not see the adjustment my team might might see it they might have to tell me or sometimes i might just a lot of times i see it off the bat because like i said i study a lot of boxing i'm i got a lot i got i got experience i don't have a lot of fights but i got like like real good experience inside the gym so um it really depends on the situation but yeah uh, adjusting is just a part of the game yeah no it, it absolutely is um so being from Camden, there's a statue there. Yeah. Jersey Joe Walcott. Yeah. How does that one day, you know, obviously Jersey Joe Walcott's a legend, you know, former former heavyweight, uh, heavyweight champion. And, and not only that, he was a referee and 
and the commissioner, um, I think he his last assignment was the uh, Muhammad Ali, um, the Muhammad Ali fight with the the Phantom Punch, mm. um, and I think that was his last assignment. Yeah, I think it was. But um, one day, maybe a what do you think? Yeah, I want Raymond to, Ford statue up there. What do you think? Yeah, for sure, most definitely. But <laughs> I want my I want a statue there like while I'm still here, so I can see it and you know take a picture next to it and uh, take my kids there to you know experience the the moment with me. Uh, I don't want to you know be gone and they got to put it up and I'm not here to enjoy it. To enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. So absolutely. Uh, yeah, I think I think I definitely I for sure want a, a statue up in in, in my city. So we talked about your mom, how proud, you, but now you are a father. So what's that like? It's great. It's like it's like no other feeling. Um, you got somebody that that depends on you every day and looking at you to lead and you know the you know when when I'm gonna eat and you know things like that. It's just it's a great feeling. I feel like somebody depending on me and relying on me is like a great feeling for me. I don't know why it just is, but. You love it. I love it. Yeah, it's. it's and you then, brought it to the fight. Yeah, I bring it all in my fights. I bring it all in my fights. <laughs> a lot of people won't bring the kids to the fight. You bring your daughter to the fight. I mean, they they probably don't bring her, don't their kids because they they scared they might lose and things like that. But I don't think of losing when I'm of course getting, getting ready for a fight. Of I course, I bring my daughter, you know, so she can experience every moment. So when she get older, she have her kids. She can tell her children how her father was a fighter, and you know. So basically tell her side of the story of the experience of being a professional world champion daughter. Right. So, yeah. How would you feel if she wanted to box? I wouldn't want her to box at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't, yeah, I wouldn't want her to box. But I would teach her, you know, you know, to defend herself. Of course, and, yeah. Know, things like that. Bring of course. It, I, bring, I always bring it to the gym. So it's nothing interesting. Even at the house, she always picking up my gloves and swinging on me and stuff like that. So yeah. she making a little noise like ish ish. Like that. So it's just, it's fun. Like having kids, it's just, it's fun. It's a fun experience. You know, every day you experiencing something new with them. That's great. And your mom must love spending time with her. She's, also, she's actually with my mom right now. She, that's my great. Mom took her skiing for the first time. Love it. Yeah. Well, man, that's great. We do something um, we call fan questions. Are you are you okay to to answer some fan questions? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Let me see what we got here. Uh, okay, here we go. Um, Josh Baines asks, I know you boxed him in the amateurs. How good is Mark Castro? Who fights for his, fir- he fights for his first title this Saturday. Yeah. Uh, Mark Castro is a, a, a good, a great pressure fighter. Uh, a lot of will, a lot of energy he comes in shape. Um, he's a great fighter. He beat me, like you say, he beat me in the amateurs. Even though it's a different, yeah, it's different. system and, and things like that, he's he still beat me. He's beat a lot of great uh, professional fighters that's boxing now, and um, I think he he got a high ceiling. It's great. He's got a title fight uh, tomorrow night. So excited to see. Yeah. From Fresno. Yeah. Yeah, he headlined the show out there. That was that was cool. So. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. I remember. That. Well, actually, I don't know. He didn't headline because you know who was on that card. He didn't headline it. Um, that that was Mikey Garcia. That was the night Mikey Garcia oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. lost to. Uh, but he was co Yeah, he was co Yeah, yeah. Okay. Second question. Um, Deshaun Tua asks. You mentioned shortly after the last fight about moving up. We all know what's in the pipeline. Does the quick turnaround help? I guess you were pretty much back to the gym straight away. What's the question? What, I don't really nah, know. I'm saying like what he's saying. We all know what's the pipeline. Like what is he? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. I mean, there could be a lot. I mean, they were talking about you fighting on the five v five card, but maybe I don't know if you. It's not. <laughs> might not be in the cards. What do you think? If it makes sense. If it makes sense. If it makes sense. If it makes dollars, it makes sense. Exactly. That's so what's we up. Wait and see. Prize fighter, fight for the biggest prize out there. I like it. Okay. Um, at Nixie Forty asks, being a southpaw, are you a natural lefty? I am. You are. I, I write with my left hand, but it's I'm weird though. Like I do everything else with my right hand. Like I throw a football with my right hand. I shoot really? basketball with my right Interesting. hand. Interesting. Yeah, but I write with my left hand. Are you nice on the court? Of 
course. What? I actually got a. Uh, <laughs> Let a me find out. <laughs> I actually got an episode on my uh, YouTube page from when I was in training camp playing basketball with Shakur and you know other people out there. Manny plays too. Manny, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uncle Drew over here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Carlito B asks. The only other fighter I can think of coming out of Camden in recent years is Jason Sosa. Yeah. Do you know him? Have you sparred? Yeah, yeah, that's my guy. Joe El Canito. He, uh, he was in my gym. We was training in the same gym. Um, that's my. He's very humble. A good friend of mine. Um, yeah, we we sparred multiple times too. Yeah. He's a former WBA super featherweight champ. Yeah. Man, he fought a lot of great guys. Yeah, and Loma. he's another one who fought anybody. So that just look that at his resume, to, man. Exactly. Fortuna. That just goes to show Loma. you what can they produce. Gamboa, he fought Gamboa. Gamboa. And that he really beat Gamboa too. Yeah. yeah. Man. Um, yeah, but also like, I don't know, Camden, I mean, you got Jersey Joe, yeah. Canito, you got Kwawi, Yo, Dwight Kwawi, Muhammad yeah. Kwawi, um, and now you got Raymond Savage Ford. Yeah. WBA featherweight champion of the world, undefeated. Yeah. And uh, man, I'm it's just, I'm so, yeah, but it's it's what it is. and and. Hopefully, maybe go on and, and, and unify or maybe another division. We'll see. Yep. But, um, you know, you're 25 now, you're hitting on all cylinders. you feel like you got your man strength? Yeah. Or you I, feel like you're getting stronger? I definitely feel like I'm getting stronger. Like, if you look at me from my pro debut to now, it's just like a major difference. Total difference. <laughs> but, you, but, again, you always had skills. But now yeah. I feel like you have different aspects to your game. That's why I just – I love the work that you've done with the guys in Cherry Hill because it just feels like you that you you just changed, man. You you again, you were always talented, but there was like a little spark that was kind of missing, or just the whole game wasn't completely filled out, and yeah. now it's rounding out, and you're becoming a very dangerous fighter yeah. because you have a lot of facets to your game. Like he was talking about guys like Sugar Ray Leonard. He's my favorite fighter of all time, yeah. but he's a guy that could box, he could slug, he could stay in the pocket, he could get you from the outside, pinpoint yeah. accuracy, speed. That's Power. Kind of, that's kind of what I'm shooting for. Like, you know, be able to do all those things. It's unbelievable. Yeah. But listen, we have a great card uh, tomorrow night, ladies and gentlemen. So please tune in. Richardson Hitchens. It's an IBF junior welterweight uh, world title eliminator against the tough Argentinian Lemos. Both guys undefeated. Also, Diego Pacheco. Uh, tons of guys on the card. But I just want to thank the undefeated WBA featherweight champion of the world, Raymond Savage Ford. Raymond, thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, you got it, brother. All right. Thank you.